Okay, so, uh, hey everybody, how's it going? Um, it's a cold winter day, we've got some snow on the ground outside, but I've come out to my workshop. You see I got my lighting installed, um, in a very, uh, Ukrainian fashion here. It's just a bunch of these magnetic LED, uh, lights that I actually brought with me when I moved here from America, but they just, they come, uh, you know, with a, one of these little power bricks like you'd have on a laptop, which plugs into any type of current. So just put a plug adapter on there. Everything's fine. I got some uh, some brighter LED bulbs installed uh, in the uh, outlets that uh, were already here. So we've got pretty good illumination in here now. And uh, I've got this huge pile of wood right here. That is all oak. Um, well, it's like 90% oak. There's a little bit of pine. This is this is pine right here on top, but uh, I've got one board that I've successfully planed down with my uh, with my jet planer. But um, as I kind of expected, you know, dust was going to be a problem, and uh, you can maybe see up in there things all clogged up with dust. On this side, it's it's pretty good too. I mean, there's the thing just. You know that's that's not even one board, and uh, I've already I've already swept up the stuff that was on the floor. But so today I got myself a dust collector, and uh, this one was about one hundred and fifty dollars, um, four thousand griven. Um, is yeah, I think it's no, it's not even one hundred and fifty. It's like one hundred and twenty dollars, um, which is way cheaper than the. Uh, the jet version. This is, uh, I, does it even have a brand name? It's got to, right? Um, uh, it is uh, Aurora. And, um, you know, my, my thinking on this, I thought about making my own, just like buying one of the little shop vacs for like, you know, 50 or 100 bucks, and just kind of making my own out of, um, so we order water, uh, drinking water, every month and they deliver it in uh, these, you know, these big bottles and the bottles kind of come to a cone at the top and they would make perfect dust collector shape. You know, I could just drill a couple holes in it and, and run the vacuum through it. But, you know, for 120 bucks, I got one that was purpose built and uh, came with this uh, nice non-collapsible hose, got a big cloth bag here. The dust gets collected um, in, in plastic bags, which they gave me a couple of. And I've got this uh, box of spare parts. Um, those look like wheels, I guess. We've got some, uh, which is good, it's gonna be mobile. Uh, we've got a little bag of nuts and bolts there. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty clear what all that stuff is. The really interesting part is that there's um, no instructions. The only piece of paper it came with was the receipt from Epicenter. Um, so now I get to, uh, I guess I'm just gonna go to the Epicenter webpage and uh, look at a picture of it and uh, try to put it together based on the picture. And hopefully pretty soon here, I can start cutting boards and make myself some more shelving and uh, like get this whole workshop area into usable condition. I've got some shelves up here on the wall um, that were pre came pre-installed, but uh, I'm not real confident in how much weight they can handle. So I can't really put power tools or like my little Tupperware containers full of nails. They'll probably hold that, but... Um, but yeah, so today's project is putting together this dust collector that came without instructions, which I've found to be um, pretty common when you order stuff online uh, in, in Ukraine. It either comes with really inadequate instructions or none at all. But hey, life's an adventure. And you know, if you're buying a dust collector online, I guess they assume that you're smart enough to put it together yourself. And I'm here to find out if that's true. Okay, so uh, I found a picture of it online, just went to the Epicenter website. I couldn't find it anywhere else online. Apparently, maybe 
This is a very uh, limited distribution product, but here's the base. You uh, take these, uh, I'm assuming that this is the bolt that the wheel goes on because it fits in the right hole and it's got that smooth part on it uh, to let the wheel spin freely. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's six sided plus it has the Phillips head um, space on it so you can tighten it with a variety of tools. And uh, well, I think I'm gonna set this up and maybe do a time lapse. Um, hopefully it'll work better than the last time lapse I tried to do. Okay, so uh, had some trouble there. I'm sure you might have uh, you might have seen it. I I put this on these things on backwards so that they were slanted in the wrong direction. But I got this uh, on there, and you just you know you've got these these two little bolts down here, and then you got the bolts that hold this crossbar on. I might have put that crossbar on backwards too, but uh, I don't think you, there really is a backwards for that. I mean, it just it's a, it's just it's just cosmetic because it looks slightly better from that side, and I figured that this side's gonna be blocked by the bag anyway. So uh, then you have to take, now, the screws that are up here are, you know, they're just, they're like this. They, uh, what sizes screws have I used so far? So you got 16 millimeter, or bolts, I mean. You got 16 millimeter, eight millimeter, and uh, 13. So you're gonna need those size wrenches if you're gonna put this thing together. That is a, uh, an eight, a 13, and a 16. And I mean a socket, I would recommend a socket, but I'm sure that a wrench would work as well. Um, well, it wouldn't work as well, but it would work also. Um, and uh, yeah, so now I've just got this sitting on here. I haven't tightened these two screws, although the ones on the other side are tight. And uh, I know, I, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting stuff done here. Uh, so it looks like the vacuum power comes up through here on the bottom. You've got this uh, right here, and then yes, there's 
it, it comes, you know, the air will blow into this area and the dust will fall down and the air will go up and the air will go out through this permeable cloth bag, which I'll probably have to like clean periodically, but that's no big deal. And they included uh, a couple of uh, pretty heavy duty, um, that's like six mil. I mean, that's, that's heavy plastic right there. Um, bags, I think they, I think they said there's five of them in there, but I haven't counted them. And uh, those I'm sure are reusable. I'll just dump those into a, you know, a different container. And uh, now I just have to figure out like, okay, so you've got all these little plastic pieces to change based on the size of the output. And then this looks like it's pretty long. So that probably holds either the top or the bottom bag on. That looks like it's a similar diameter. Yeah, so um, again, they don't include instructions. And uh, as I didn't find any online. I had trouble even finding the product page, except on Epicenter's webpage. Epicenter is like the, the Lowe's or Home Depot of Ukraine. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're making progress. The, uh, the floor in here isn't super stable because there's a pit under here that used to be used so that you could like pull a car in and then work underneath it from the pit. But at this point, the pit is filled up with sand and gravel and uh, a bunch of bags of concrete that got wet. So they're basically just rocks now, rocks in a bag. Um, but yeah, so I've just got these boards uh, as my floor and it's not real stable. So every time I've walked back and forth across these to go and get my wrench set, um, I knocked the camera over because the camera is just perched perilously on top of these, uh, on top of this Tupperware right here. Um, maybe I should get like a little cell phone holder if I'm going to be recording videos out here. But you know what? I haven't even got a dust collector yet, so the cell phone holder is going to have to wait. But anyway, back to work. There, I wanted to flip my camera around so I could hold it easier with my left hand. And uh, we've, got, we've got Doctor down there looking pretty anxious. Doctor's not a big fan of power tools. Um, kind of a weird little safety. Like, I mean, I totally get a safety um, thing like that, you know, an emergency stop button on a planer uh, or a joiner. This is both. I, I sometimes refer to it as a planer, but it's it's both. Um, but yeah, an emergency stop on a blower. I, I hesitate to imagine what kind of emergencies could happen 
with a dust collector, but um, it is a Ukrainian dust collector. Ooh, that's good suction. Yeah, that's good suction. Oh, oh, there it goes. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, just all the dust, all the sawdust. Okay, I have dust collection. Now, uh, let's just get it hooked up to my, uh, to my joiner and see how that goes. Oh, you know what? There's a big pile right there. Well, no. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, hook it up to the joiner and see how that goes. Okay, so, um, here it is. I turned it on for half a second while it was up on the, uh, table there, and then I realized what a stupid idea that was. Um, and I decided that I was gonna put away all my tools. You know, I really should not be keeping little pieces of metal on top of my planer. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> um, I still haven't figured out which end of the hose I need to use, but I've got this little thing. Not a terrible contraption, but um, you want to make sure that you know how it goes together because it's not immediately obvious if it's already taken apart. It might be kind of hard to put back the way it goes, but I've just got to figure out. Yeah, so I've got these little, uh, those little plastic, those little black plastic pieces over there. Um, I do have to say that putting the, the bag on the bottom, they could come up with some better way to do that because um, if I had to hold the bag and tighten the metal band simultaneously, um, that's just really, really difficult. And, and you know, with, with a bag that size, I mean, yeah, I have a small workshop, but I can create a lot of sawdust in one afternoon. Um, I'm probably gonna have to think up, maybe I can 3D print something that will uh, make that a little bit easier somehow, I don't know. Um, some kind of ring that would just be a friction fit uh, so that it would hold the bag in place or maybe some clips or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, that's what I got a 3D printer for. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, moment of truth, you know? Okay, well, I have dust collection. Um, I think it took me a little over an hour to set it up, but a lot of that was me uh, trying to get my camera to balance on top of Tupperware. Um, tools are pretty simple, and uh, I did end up uh, needing one more, um, one more size wrench to tighten the, uh, the little things that hold the hose on. Um, I, I don't think this came with it, maybe it did. I think this was already in the garage, but this is obviously a hose and this one has a tightener on it. So, uh, maybe that actually came with the planer. Uh, and so 
That piece that I just broke, uh, not a big deal. I can print another one. I've got PLA. Um, I'll just I'll just take the measurements and print print another one. It'll be fine. But uh, yeah, my workshop's coming together, and for 120 bucks, uh, it's not loud. I mean, not unbearably loud. I am wearing, um, you know, sound dampening headphones, and I you you know, and if I'm not wearing these headphones, I'm wearing you know, my standard 3M, really careful with my ears. But uh, yeah, it's not unbearably loud. The dog wasn't totally terrified of it. Um, and I'm quite happy with it. It's mobile, it's light, and uh, it's, it's, it's got some pretty serious suction power. Now let's see here, it's 220 volts, 50 hertz, blah, 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 550 watts. So that's kind of important to me because I have one electrical socket. Oh, sorry about the light there. Yeah, I have one electrical socket in my workshop here. Uh, so I'm running off of one circuit and I don't have access to the switch box that this is the circuits on. So I don't know how many watts I can, how many amps I can pull um, before things go south. And I was kind of worried about that. So they did have more powerful, um, you know, uh, dust collectors, you know, I could have gotten a 1500 watt, but I just don't need it in the small of a workshop. I'm not, I'm not running multiple tools at one time. And, um, and I needed to keep it low enough that it's not going to blow a fuse because I need to be able to run it simultaneously with the planer and simultaneously with the table saw once I eventually get one. But yeah, this is going to keep this place, uh, make it much easier to use and uh, much nicer to work in. It's coming together and I'm excited and I can't wait to start making stuff. I've got plans that I've drawn up, um, both 3D and 2D. Uh, drew them up both virtually and on paper. But uh, yeah, my first project's gonna be a little uh, island for our kitchen because I need a place to, uh, to where I can really work pizza dough and bread dough and stuff and there's just not enough countertop space with, with the baby and the coffee, like, it's just too much. We got the, the mixing, the mixer, and the microwave, and the, and the toaster, and all the baby stuff, and the tea kettle. There's just not um, a lot of free counter space in the kitchen, but there's a lot of free floor space. So I'm gonna put a kitchen island in there with uh, probably a pine frame and an oak top, or maybe I'll make the whole thing out of oak. Why not? I've got a lot, but, um, all right, so that's my uh, that's my Aurora. Uh, I think it was called the 200 or something. It's the only dust collector they make, so you can't confuse it with others. And it's a good little good little buy for 4,800 Griven, which right now is less than 150 bucks.